This is about midway through a bathroom remodel where we were trying to make a decision about an accent wall at the far end of the bathroom. This view is from near the end of the project after most of the finishes are complete. And you can see the really nice result we ended up with on the accent wall. This video will take a look at how we created this finish. This product is called Variance. It's an acrylic coating that goes on walls and can give you a plaster-like appearance to the, to the wall itself. You can build depth into the, into the texture of the wall and the look of it called modeling. Uh, so we're going to do one wall in this bathroom with uh, variants in kind of a light, kind of a milky, milky brown color. <clears throat> As you can see the consistency of it. But it goes on with a trowel, and then as you work the product onto the wall with multiple coats, you'll end up getting different effects with it. I've been using Variants for about five or six years now. I have no relationship with the manufacturers apart from being a customer. The biggest appeal for me are the types of effects you can create with it. I know a little bit about the history of the company and have had some conversations with people who helped in the development of the products. Though they started out as a company based out of the southwestern United States, the website indicates they have a pretty good distribution network at least throughout the U.S. at the current time. I'm releasing a companion video to this one, which is a tutorial on the specific steps of applying variants. In it, I take a piece of sheetrock screwed to the wall in the shop and apply multiple coats talking through what's happening with each step. It demonstrates a style of application that I use and is very basic. So if you think you might be interested in exploring this product more thoroughly, this is a good video to give you an idea about what that might involve. You can click on the link at the top right of this screen or it will also be linked at the conclusion of this video. Working around windows and curved areas like bullnose corner bead here really slows down the process. Since I'm trying to get a consistent appearance with my finish, I have to really take my time around spots like this. Even though it's a small space, I still try to mimic the types of strokes I use in the larger open areas just to hopefully get the blended look I'm after. Like so many skills in construction, people develop their own styles for how they do things. Applying variants is no different. In fact, two people can apply exactly the same product to separate walls and get dramatically different results. When I try to describe the look I'm trying to achieve with my application process, I, I call it consistent randomness. By that I mean I'm trying to get an overall blended look while avoiding creating areas that stand out or look out of place because I altered my basic technique. I don't know if it makes any sense, but if you start changing the way you're applying the product in the middle of the process, it will show up and it'll look different when you're done. Getting ready to apply the second coat of variance now on this wall. Applied the first coat yesterday. As you can see, you get a little bit of texture happening here. Um, uh, the second coat will add a lot more depth to it as we begin to kind of cover some of these dark areas light areas with another thin coat and then pull off the material it will get a little uh, a little busier but not not really when it's all said and done so um, next coat is coming and we'll see how that turns out let me not forget to mention that variance needs to be applied over a smooth finish the walls of this bathroom had an orange peel texture that i had to float out with drywall mud prior to starting this process if I were to put variants on the ceiling, I would likewise have to float it out smooth. So if you start doing this with any frequency, you get pretty good at working with drywall mud also. One more prep step was to paint the wall with a base coat of sheetrock primer before starting the variants. For comparison purposes, this is the first coat that was applied the day before that is now fully dried. And this is the second coat I just applied, and you can see the line where I stopped just above the window. As it continues to dry, the darker areas will fade, and you begin to get a sense of what building up multiple coats will do to the finish. On this job, this will be the final coat before I put on a final protective coat of clear finish called Plaster Shield. 
but I could continue with another coat of variance that would again slightly change the overall appearance of the finish. I make random swirls with my trowel moving both left to right and right to left in roughly half circle motions. And I try to overlap them to keep their sizes generally consistent. After doing that for multiple coats of variance, I tend to end up with a good outcome. You have to be careful at corners and at the ceiling because it's easy to do things in those areas that can show up as vague lines kind of running parallel to the corner or the ceiling. It's something that once you see it, you learn how to correct and it's not that big of a deal. Finally, as I finish up the second coat in this larger area and work my way down the wall, I'm moving kind of diagonally from top right to bottom left. Even though my inclination might be to work level lines left and right or in a straight pattern up and down, it's better to avoid doing that. After I've run a diagonal pattern down a few feet, then I feel below and back to the right towards the corner. That's all for the purpose of not being predictable in my pattern. And once I've established that line of new material and I'm ready to fill underneath it, I want to make sure that my strokes with my trowel start in a dry area and finish back in the wet area. This is a lot like painting with a brush where you want your finished brush strokes to always be back into an area that you just painted. There's not a great deal of price difference between variants and high-end paint, but as you can see, there's a lot of difference in the amount of labor that's required to apply variants as opposed to painting the wall with a roller. The results that you can get, however, can be pretty dramatic. If you're wondering about how close this can be to actual plaster, let me put it this way. I've been able to go into homes where there is a damaged and stained plaster and have been able to match the original plaster with variants to the point that it's indistinguishable from the old. It's really a pretty amazing product.